The Frankie de Jong to Manchester United transfer story has become the saga of all sagas. And we're not at the end of it yet. And I want to do this video because I think it's extremely important. So please give me 10 minutes of your time, watch it, and then leave a comment. Because in this video, I want to explain exactly what is going on. Taking a step back and helping you understand what we're involved in, why United are not walking away, and what really is going on behind the scenes. So please... Watch the video, drop a like on it if you did like it. <laughs> oh, you probably won't like it, but I feel like I want to explain it because so many people are messaging me because Frankie de Jong is on the preseason tour. He's in America with Barcelona. What does that mean? Does that mean that he's leaving? Does that mean that the transfer is not happening? It's just the latest step in what has been a negotiation power struggle, really, effectively, between Frankie de Jong and his agents and Barcelona. Because if you go back to May and you follow the conversation, it's been very, very consistent from Frankie de Jong's side. He wants to stay at Barcelona. If you look at all the updates from Fabrizio Romano throughout this whole process, back when the fee was 65 million euros before that's now been increased to 75 million euros guaranteed. Same thing. His priority has always been to stay at Barcelona. Even when we reached that full agreement, as I said, personal terms, still the issue. He wants to stay at Barcelona. Frankie de Jong's agents, Ali Dursan and Has Hassan Setinkaya, have informed Barcelona that Frankie has no intention to leave. Nothing's changed. And it's, it's created this situation where a lot of United fans are going, well, what are we doing? Why are we not walking away? Frankie de Jong doesn't want to join Manchester United, is the, is, is the connection they make there. But what I want to explain, I have to explain, I have explained a lot, Frankie de Jong can want to stay at Barcelona and be happy at the idea of joining Manchester United at the same time. And what we're witnessing, as I said, is a negotiation power struggle that's happening between Barcelona and his agents. And we all know what it's all based around. And it's based around this contract. We know full, I've, I've explained this in a lot of detail, I don't need to explain this anymore. But he deferred a, a ton of wages over those two years to be paid back over the next four. He had no intention of leaving. And presumably, and again, I'm making an assumption here, but these two loyalty bonuses are probably tied into that renewal that happened. And that was their way of rewarding him. And you know what happens if he puts, <laughs> you know what will happen if he puts in a transfer request? He goes public with the fact that he wants to leave. You can kiss goodbye to those loyalty bonuses. As Steve Bates explains here, this is the, I, I've, I've, I've become a little bit exhausted, I'll be honest, in trying to explain this to fans. Because as Steve explains there, Frankie de Jong and his tough negotiating agent believe expressing a public wish to join United will weaken their position as they fight Barcelona for payment of the money that he is owed. And that is what is going on. It's just, as I said, a political power struggle. And it's, it's weird. It's really, really weird. Because Barcelona are telling Frankie de Jong to leave the club. They want him to join Manchester United because they need to balance their books. He doesn't want to leave. It's his dream club. That picture there, him and his uh, girlfriend, who is now a fiancé, from when he was way younger. He always wanted to join Barcelona. It was the dream for him. But as Karl Anker puts here on The Athletic, I think this, this one line is, is exactly what it is. It's his dilemma. He's rejected by a club that he loves and he's wanted by one that he doesn't. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. Not saying that could change. But so many people, so many United fans are looking at this going, Stan, what are we doing? We're embarrassing ourselves. We're going after a player that doesn't want to join Manchester United. And I keep saying, look, right there, you've got our CEO, Richard Arnold, and our football director, John Murto, in Barcelona last week. And the deal got agreed a few days later. The new deal for 75 million up front. And people are saying, why on earth is that happening? Why aren't we walking away? Why are we not looking at other candidates? And I'll tell you the one single reason that is happening. Is because Eric Ten Hag will have assurances directly from the horse's mouth. That's the only reason why we're continuing in the same vein that we are. 
We're not getting distracted by anything that is said by Barcelona. We're not getting distracted by anything that is represented in the media. We're not listening to that. Because Eric Ten Hag has been told directly by Frankie de Jong that he'd be happy to play for Manchester United. The Carl Anker putting it there saying he's rejected by a club that he loves. He's wanted by one that he doesn't. He will have told Eric Ten Hag that he'd be happy to join. But the only way that that happens is if these, this contract negotiation is sorted. If this political power struggle, the negotiation power struggle between Barcelona is resolved. And he can't do that by going public about the fact that he wants to leave, which is why his agents have been reiterating the same story since day one. Priorities to stay. Priority is to stay. Priority is to stay. And priority is to stay. Now, for a lot, as I said, for a lot of fans, that's, that's created this situation in their head where they're thinking, why are we chasing a player that doesn't want to join United? And that's the, that's the, that's the main takeaway I'd, I'd like you to take from this video. Him wanting to stay at Barcelona does not mean that he wouldn't be happy to play for Manchester United. Both of those things can exist at the exact same time. And it really doesn't matter what any person at Barcelona says. The Barcelona president, Joan Laporta, telling Manchester United he's not for sale whilst then meeting Manchester United the very next day to talk about the sale of Frankie de Jong. He's out there saying it's not true that the club is forcing him to sell, forcing Xavi to sell de Jong, whilst at the same time, Barcelona are telling de Jong to leave the club. They're snaky. It's horrible what they're doing. And I've told you, it's character, assassina character assassination of Frankie de Jong. Because Mathieu Alameni, who was one of, the, one of the men who met with John Murto and Richard Arnold, Frankie's a very important player. And we count on him. But we know La Liga. La Liga's fair play tells us to sell players. I can't say any more. He is for sale. And at the same time as all of this going on, everything with Frankie de Jong, what are Barcelona doing? They're going and signing Robert Lewandowski for like 40 to 50 million euros. They're going and signing Rafinha for 60 plus million euros. A club which is skint. A club which is so heavily in debt that they have a negative salary cap. And that, I believe, needs to be readjusted by the 31st of July. I don't know if that's completely confirmed or not, but I think it is. But I just, I felt like I really wanted to do this video because I felt it's very important to understand that. That De Jong would have told Ten Hag directly that he'd be happy to join Manchester United. Even if he doesn't want to leave his dream club. And he doesn't want to leave his dream club. I feel sorry for him. Imagine that. The club that you... Grow up as a kid, the, the, the club that you feel that you can have your whole career at, and you finally join it. And this happens? It's, it's a bad end to a Disney film for Frankie de Jong. But it's one that uh, he's going to have to accept it. He's going to have to uh, be an, no, not be an adult about it. That's, that's, an, that's an unfair thing to say. But I've, as I said, I wanted to do this video, not in a live stream, not, not an interactive video because, well, I'm interacting at that same point in time. It's harder to get this point across. But I, I just, this is why Manchester United haven't walked away from the Frankie de Jong transfer. We won't walk away from the Frankie de Jong transfer because our manager would have been told directly by de Jong. And therefore, it doesn't matter what you read in the press anywhere. We've agreed the deal with Barcelona. 85 million euros, 75 million guaranteed with an extra 10 million in add-ons. But the agent was re has reiterated time and time again, he's staying, he's staying, he's staying, he's staying. And that will be the case until it is sorted. Until his agent there has sorted this contract out and Frankie de Jong gets the money he is owed. Because once that is done, he will join Manchester United. I really, really, jeez. If we end up not with, with no Frankie de Jong this summer, oh, I, I don't know whether I can count this summer as a success. But this is why United aren't walking away. I apologise if I've waffled a little bit in this video. But I felt it was very important to get across. And I hope I have. And I hope we don't have to have, keep having this conversation every day in the live streams. 
Eh, that's why I wanted to do it. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. But we're not walking away from De Jong. And that's why. Because Eric Ten Hag has been told directly by De Jong. So therefore, it doesn't matter what else you read in the press.